Hey guys, what's going on? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a notification system in Roblox Studio. As you'll see right here, we have our little brick. We click it and it'll notify us with whatever text you want it to. There you go. You can have two up on the screen at once. It's pretty cool. So basically what this is, is it's just a module script that you can add into your game. You can call it from any local script, give it whatever text you want, and it'll notify the player with that text. You guys can use this in your game if a player tries to buy something and they don't have enough coins or if their inventory is full or anything like that. Alright guys, so to get started you're first going to want to add a screen GUI to the starter GUI. I'm going to name mine error UI. Inside of that UI you're going to want to add two string values. I'm naming mine message one and I'm going to duplicate that and name the second one message two. All right guys, and next up you're going to need a frame. This is my frame right here. If you want to use this frame, you can find that in the description. It won't come with any code, just the frame. It's a text label and an image label. The image label is optional. And of course we need that text label. Of course, you can use your own custom frame if you'd like. We're going to put that inside of replicated storage. Now we're going to add a module script and a starter player script. We're going to start off by getting some variables. Now I'm going to add a weight just to make sure everything is loaded in before we grab the variables. Now we're going to grab the UI. Now we're going to get the tween service. Now the debris service. And now we're going to grab replicated storage. Next up, we're going to grab the frame. All right guys, now we're gonna add a table into the module. All right guys, now we're gonna have two positions. There's position one. And there's position two. Inside of these positions, we're going to give it a size and a position. Now position one is that first position when it first tweens onto the screen and position two is that second position. It's a little bit smaller and it's more off to the side. The positions I'm going to use in this video fit my frame perfectly, which you can find in the description. But if you're using your own custom frame, you can play around with the positions and size and find out what fits best for you. All right, guys, so next up, we're going to create that function that you'll be calling from other local scripts. All right, guys, so let's start on this function. I'll explain everything as I go. Just follow after me. Alright guys, so what we're doing right here is first we're checking if there is a message, then we are 
checking if there is a value in message two. So if there's a value in message two, then that means that there's a frame in the second position. And if there's a frame in that second position, then we wanna get rid of that frame and move it down. So first thing we're doing is we're finding that frame. If there is that frame, then we're going to name it to frame three. Now we are tweening it. This tween right here is just going to tween it off screen. 1.2 on the Y axis is off screen. We give it 0.2 seconds. And then after 0.3 seconds, we are destroying it. Next up, we're gonna find out if there is a frame in position one. All right guys, now what we're doing here is if we know that there is a frame in that message one position, then we're going to change it into that message two position. We're going to try to find that frame. If there is a frame in the position one, then we're going to change its name. Whoops, that is supposed to say position two, airframe two. Then we're gonna change it to airframe two and we're going to tween it down into that second position. This right here will give the tween two inputs. It'll give it the size and the position of position two. So it's gonna take that frame that was in position one and it's going to shrink it down and move it down into position two. All right guys, just follow me for this next part and I will explain everything after. All right guys, so what we're doing here might seem a little bit complicated, but I'm gonna walk you guys through it and explain everything in detail. So first off, we're checking if there is a skip and I'll explain what that skip is in one second. It's super simple. Basically, whether or not skip is true will tell us whether or not we need to create a new frame or if we're just calling the function to move all the existing frames down. Right here, we are creating that new frame, parenting it to the UI, naming it error frame one, setting its text equal to the message. Right here, we're setting its position to off screen. And then with this tween, we're gonna tween it into that first position. Now, after all of this, we have our error onto the screen in that position one. Right here, we're, we're going to wait two seconds. And now we're gonna find out if the frame is still in the game. So if it has a parent, then it is not destroyed and it is still in the game. And we're going to call this whole function all over again but this time we're going to set skip equal to true so when you're calling this function from your own local script you do not have to worry about that second variable you can just type in the message and i'll show you guys that but you do not want to set skip equal to true but when we're calling it through this function we set it to true this way it knows not to create a new frame 
and instead it's only going to move the frames down. Hopefully that makes sense guys. Essentially what this function is doing is first it moves all of the frames down. So frame one goes to frame two, frame two goes off the screen and is destroyed. And it will create room for that frame that's going into position one. And right here, this, it creates that frame and moves it into that position right there. However, if no message is being called again, we still need to take those frames that are already here and move them down off the screen. So after two seconds, it'll take that frame and it will move it down one. And then after 0.5 seconds, it'll move it down again. That's what this is doing right here. Hopefully you guys understand that. And that's it for our script. So now just to test it, we can add in a part into our workspace. We can give it a click detector. And I already have a local script right here, but in this local script, and in this local script, this is basically how you would call the module script. You require the module script, and then you're going to reference the function send message, and you're simply going to give it a string. Whatever you type in here is going to be sent into the notification and be shown on your screen. All right, guys, great job. I hope this video was super helpful. And if it was, make sure to like and subscribe. If you guys have any questions or video ideas, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.